drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered to you by edpedia world previous couple of lectures we were discussing about the different kind of ferrous alloys today we will discuss about several of the non ferrous alloys that exist and uh, most important of them which are used commonly so as we saw the ferrous alloys uh, offers a wide variety of solutions for different applications right but then why do we need non ferrous alloys iron and steel though is the dominant material used it has the following drawbacks what are the drawbacks they uh, iron has inherently a high density okay that makes materials heavy it is highly susceptible to corrosion corrosion behavior of iron is not very good it corrodes and uh, that leads to loss of material catastrophic failure in addition it has the electrical conductivity of iron and iron alloys is comparatively low compared to some of the non ferrous systems which are available so these drawbacks which exist in the iron system or the ferrous alloys can be countered by using non ferrous alloys there are non ferrous systems which can counter different problems which exist in the ferrous system as per the requirement uh, thereby we choose a particular amount of non ferrous system if we require better electrical conductivity or we choose a different system if we require let's say a very low density uh, let us see those kind of systems okay the most important non ferrous alloys that exist and are readily available are copper one of the most important metal in addition to iron then we have aluminum magnesium titanium these are the most important non ferrous alloys and we'll discuss them one by one to begin with let's see copper copper is a very soft and ductile material in its pure state and this soft extra soft nature makes it difficult to machine okay uh but the soft nature has a advantage that it is easily deformable it can take a lot of cold work huge amount of cold work can be pro provided into a carbon a copper alloys copper is also having a very good corrosion resistance okay alloying improves the mechanical and corrosion properties further so if you alloy copper the mechanical and corrosion properties improves further for copper systems the problem with copper is that copper alloys generally can't be heat treated now heat treatment is not possible thereby strengthening by heat treatment processes is not possible so what is used to increase the strength of copper alloys we either go for cold working or we go for solid solution in order to improve the strength of copper alloys right let us now see some of the specific copper alloy systems that exist you must have heard about brass brass is a copper zinc alloy copper zinc alloy you can search uh, for the copper zinc phase diagram what you will see is that at low percentage of zinc zinc is a substitutional element that is copper and zinc are of similar size so basically zinc substitutes copper and uh, in the cop uh, copper zinc phase diagram you will see that alpha phase exists up to around 35% zinc okay and this is in the phase center cubic microstructure fcc material if you remember from previous lectures is uh, has 12 slip systems and that makes it a good material ductile material and easily malleable material so the alpha phase is quite soft is ductile and can be easily cold worked because it is 
FCC structured. Okay. If you go to higher zinc percentages, we get beta brass. Beta brass has higher zinc amount, and the structure now changes to BCC structure. The presence of BCC structure, what it does is that beta brass is harder. It makes the material harder and stronger than alpha brass. Okay. So to point out, brass has mainly alpha and beta, which is used. Alpha is ductile. and used under such circumstances where ductility is required beta is strong and hard stronger and harder so beta is used when strength is of more importance than ductility fine another important alloy apart from brass of copper is bronze bronze are copper alloys mainly with tin but also it can be alloy with aluminium silicon or nickel okay and bronze is much stronger than brass so bronze has further high strength compared to brass and also bronze has very good corrosion resistance as i said in the previous slide copper itself has good corrosion resistance but if you add alloying elements that can further in improve the corrosion resistance so bronze has good strength as well as better corrosion resistance than copper itself okay in addition to brass and bronze we have new research going on in the field of copper and uh, alloy systems like copper beryllium are produced which has precipitate which are precipitation hardenable thereby they have excellent tensile strength okay they have very good strength in them but in addition to that strength it uh, this uh, system cube is having good electrical property very good corrosion resistance as well as the wear property is excellent for this system what is the catch the catch is this system is a uh, expensive system so only under specialized applications we use such kind of system okay so this was broadly speaking some of the ideas that exist with copper alloys and this is not an extensive discussion about copper we are not discussing about copper end to end this was just to give you an idea about the non ferrous systems that can exist and they are uh, they are utilized under different circumstances and they also provide flexibility with uh, different property combinations after copper alloys let's see aluminum alloys the main thing about aluminum alloys is that it has low density the density of aluminum is around 2.7 g per cc okay aluminum has very good electrical and thermal conductivity so these are the catching properties of aluminum thereby it is also an extensively researched alloy system aluminum alloy has high corrosion resistance it is highly corrosion resistance in ambient atmosphere why so aluminum in itself is highly reactive metal but what happens is that once you expose aluminum to air it immediately forms a very very thin layer of alumina and this alumina is very hard very intact very wear resistant and this prevents further oxidation of uh, aluminum so what is happening is that the outer surface is forming a very fine thin layer of alumina which is avoiding further oxidation of material inside and thereby providing a very good corrosion resistance to aluminum alloys aluminum is a fcc metal again and thereby it has very very good ductility even at low temperature even at very low temperature aluminum is very very ductile material and can be rolled or machined easily the drawback of aluminum is mainly that it has a low melting point thereby aluminum cannot be used at for high temperature applications 
aluminum's application is restricted to room temperature or uh, temperatures till 100 200 or at max 300 degrees celsius beyond that aluminum becomes very very soft aluminum can be cold worked so cold working is possible in aluminum and it can be alloyed to improve strength okay but alloying what problem does it create is that alloying of aluminum reduces its corrosion resistance the corrosion behavior becomes worse on alloying but depends on the situation depends on the application if the application is such that corrosion is not a huge problem but we want to increase the strength then we go for alloying what are the main alloying elements that is added to aluminium the main alloying elements are copper magnesium silicon manganese zinc some of this alloys aluminium when alloyed with some of this elements has precipitation hardening it can be precipitation hardened and thereby the strength can be further increased so aluminium can be cold worked cold worked it can also be ppt hard, precipitation hardened in some of the alloy systems okay copper was possible to cold work it was not possible to harden by heat treatment processes aluminium also is not really heat treatable but the only heat treatment possible is in aluminium alloys when it can be precipitation hardened so this is the possible heat treatment to increase strength okay aluminium along with magnesium and titanium form a combination of elements which are low density element and these three elements aluminium magnesium and titanium are extensively researched for the tra transportation industry transportation industry wants to save on fuel how do you save fuel by reducing the weight of the vehicle how do you do that by finding new material which has good strength at even low density at low weight so that is where aluminium magnesium and titanium comes into play all these three have very low density compared to copper or iron and thereby these are highly researched fields in the transportation sector so just to recap what we discussed is uh, we discussed about copper the fact that it is uh, not heat treatable but it can be cold worked or solid solution hardened then we discussed about brass and bronze and then finally we discussed about aluminium its low density property and the fact that it can be cold worked as well as heat treated in the form of precipitation hardening we'll see several of the other non ferrous alloys in the next class till then have a great day goodbye